So I want to introduce the concept of loops to you now. So loops can also be referred to as a type of iteration. Now, iteration is one of the cornerstones of all programming. So you have selection, which is your if statements, and you have iteration, which is your loops. And you will lose loops and uh, if statements all the time, whatever you're programming. So I'm going to go over the basics of loops now, and we're going to start with a for loop. It's worth noting there are two types of loops. There are for loops and there are wow loops in Python. Now, a common question I get asked is, in which scenario should I use which type of loop? Because often there is a way of manipulating the loop for either type to do what you want to do. So the default answer I always give here is think about what it is you're trying to loop. If you know exactly how many times you want it to loop, you use a for loop. And if you don't know how many times you want it to loop, you use a while loop. So an example for this would be if you were looping through for every letter in a word. If the computer knows the word, then it knows how many times to do that loop. So in which case it'd be a for loop. A while loop might be something more like where you're trying to take a user input until it meets a certain criteria. So for example, entering a password. We don't know how many times it might take the user to get a password that matches what the computer's got. For a scenario like that, you would use a while loop. So they're the basics of the different types of loops. So now let's teach you how to do one. So we'll start with probably the most common type of loop, which is called a four I in range. And we'll just give it the number 10. And before I go over this, I'm going to explain a few different things here. So in Python, the default starting value for everything is a zero, not a one. So as a human, we often start counting at one. So if you say count three, we go one, two, three. When Python, if you say count three, it does zero, one, two. So it does three numbers, but it starts at zero. So if I do four I in range 10 and I run it, it goes zero to nine. So that's fine. If you wanted to change that, I could add a plus one here and then it would do one to 10. But I need to go through a few things here to fully explain this. So let's start with I. So I is effectively a variable. It's a loop variable. So what's going to happen is it's going to change on each occurrence of this loop. So just like with an if statement, you define your for loop here. And one of the types is a for I in range. And then whatever code you've got nested, you know, indented after this, however long, will run this many times. So if we go through what happens here, so it says for I in range 10, so the computer knows to run this block of code 10 times. And then what it does is on the first loop, I starts at zero. So when I'm saying print I plus one, it prints out the number one. Because I was zero, I plus one is one. Then it goes back up to the top, I becomes one, so it prints out two. Then I becomes two so it prints out three you get the idea it's actually easier to talk about when you do it like this because effectively this is the first loop where it's zero then one then two etc now it's also worth noting that i as i mentioned is a variable which means you can give it any name you want so i could write house here and as long as i write house inside the loop the loop will run exactly the same look so this is a variable, you can give it any name you want and you'll see in, in this video why I sometimes change the name. It defaults on all the tutorials you'll ever see and in textbooks as I. And the reason they use the letter I is because of this word here, iteration. So I is the first letter of iteration, so that's all often the default letter it gives. That's the only reason. So it's also worth noting that the number here is how many times the loop runs. So because it's looping 10 times, that's why it's going zero to nine because there's 10 digits there. So that's the basics of a for loop. You can use I within it. You can do things like print something out. So if I do this, it's just going to print hello 10 times. So it's a way of running codes multiple times. Now, in this video, I am going to go over a load of different types of loops 
that you might want to do. I'm going to start with the basics and then I'm going to come back to range and we'll talk about range in a lot more detail later. Um, I'm doing this more as a reference. So I think for a lot of challenges, just this will suffice for now. But it's worth you knowing what else you can do with for loops. So to go to the next one, uh, let's have a variable and let's have name equals Dan. Now, if you've got a word like I have, I've got the string Dan inside the variable name. So I could use that to say, I could say for letter in name and I could print letter. Now when I run that, it's printing out each letter one at a time. Now it's worth you understanding this because this is another common type of for loop when you're looping through something. So you can just use in. So I can say, this is the same as me having I, so I could have I there and it would run the same. But this is a good example of where you might want to change the variable name so it, it makes your code more readable. Because for letter in name, is much easier to understand than for I in name. So it's important to change the variables where it's appropriate. So this is another thing. You can loop through words, strings, letter by letter. There's something you're going to see introduced in a little while, which is um, lists. So I won't go through it in lots of detail now, but lists is where you can have more than one piece of data inside a single variable. It's known as a data structure and there's a few different types. Um, so I, I won't go through it all now, but we've got three bits of data inside a variable now called names. So if I run this, it will break look because I've still got it saying name, not names. Now, if I run this letter, isn't going to be appropriate because what this does is loop through one word at a time or name. So I would say for name in names, print name and then I can loop through each item in a list so you can do each letter in a word each item in a list you can loop through a certain amount of times using the thing range so for something in range and then a number and they're probably for the first you know 20 odd challenges you might do that's probably absolutely sufficient in terms of loops but I am going to go into a couple of other things here and there are going to be a couple more videos on different types of loops as well. So the last one I'll do on this video, and I'll do an example, is I'll go in more detail on the range type of loop. So if I go back to for I in range. So before you saw me have the number 10. And I just printed I out. And it looped through like this. Now it's worth understanding there's, you've got quite a lot of power in these brackets here so what we can do is we can have two values separated by a comma so i could have a 10 we'll keep and i could have 100 and what that's going to do is that's going to loop through between the number 10 so the starting position is on the left and the finishing position is on the right now it's worth noting that 10 and I've said finish at 100 and it stops at 99. That is the point at which it will break out of the loop. So I on the first instance is 10, so prints 10, then I becomes 11, prints 11, etc., etc. But when I becomes 100, it goes right, I've met my end clause effectively, so I stop looping. So it will never actually print out the number 100. So if we wanted it to, just write 101. And then it prints all the way to 100 because it's at 101, it's going to stop. So it's worth you understanding that. The uh, other thing is you can have yet another number with a comma. And I could have the number five and I'll run it. So if you can spot what this is doing. It's an increment value. So this is printing out with a gap of five every time. So it prints out the number 10. And it's still going to finish at 100, but it's going to increment in fives. So this is quite nice for doing times tables and things like that. So we've got our increment value. Now, this can actually, just with these three numbers, but by moving them around a bit, we can actually make this a lot more complicated and do some quite more exciting things, which 
they'll seem basic now but when we come back to it in the future you'll find you can do a lot of cool things with these so if i were to swap the numbers over so i go from 100 to 10 logically i'm thinking right we can use this to count backwards so if we start 100 and go to 10 but this still isn't going to work but we're not getting an error so the reason is it's tried to do it but remember computers just follow your instructions to the letter so i've said start at 100 go to 10 in increments of five but five is a positive number so you can't add five to 100 and end up at 10. so what we need to do is do negative numbers here so if we have a higher number on the left than the one on the middle we need negative numbers on the right so it's got to count from 100 to 10 so it's got to be going in a negative fashion so you can see here look starts at 100 goes all the way down and we know why it doesn't print 10 out because 10 is at the point it's going to stop so if we change that to 9 it's going to print the 10 out at the bottom so that can be really useful um i don't think there's anything absolutely essential to go through now more than that because i think you're going to see the other things as we do our challenges later and i think putting them into context like that will make it much better that is the absolute fundamentals of for loops and it can become incredibly useful and um, i'll show you an example now so i'm going to show you something that might st you'll start seeing the program come to life a little bit even though it's quite basic so i'm going to start by importing something called time now these are modules so i can import the time module what it will give me is loads of other things built into python loads of other functions that i can use so you'll understand why i've employed that in a minute so i'm going to do a simple loop again so i'm going to do for i in range and we'll go from 10 to zero and we're going to go in increments of minus one so hopefully you now know that's going to start at 10 and count down in minus one so i could print out i now that's all useful but what we want to do here is to make it a little bit more exciting we want to add a delay on each print so because i've got time i've imported time i can write time again and i can press dot and then i've got lots of different things i can write that the computer will do something with so one of them is time.sleep so this will allow us to add a little delay between each of the printouts so then if i print out outside my loop something like print out go what we've effectively created is a 10 second countdown to it then saying the word go which we could use at like the start of a race or something like that so if i press run now what we can see is the delay and then when it gets down to the bottom it will break out of my loop and therefore go and run this code because it's not indented and it will say go so that's me giving you an example now you're not meant to be able to do that at this point on your own because you've never been taught about this idea of importing time but hopefully if you take these two away you could have done that program without the delaying and that's the sort of position i'd hope you'd be at, at this point prior to doing any challenges okay make sure there's one more uh video on for loops specifically um, and there's also an enumerate loop i want to show you in another video so make sure you watch those but remember at this point the challenges will start easy and we'll use these as reference points for later on as the challenges become more difficult you you might go oh i remember when he went through that and then you can go back and revisit and copy the code when it's needed all right you're not meant to remember everything at this point 